Hey guys, it's TF Now. Welcome back to the channel. And in the month of October, every Thursday leading up to Halloween, we're going to be taking a look at a previously released or new, if I can make it work, NECA Ultimate Action Figure horror related, of course. And today we're going to be taking a look at the NECA Thanksgiving Ultimate John Carver Action Figure. I did watch this a couple of weeks ago. I know it wasn't Thanksgiving, but I did want to prepare for getting this because. You know, I thought this looked like a cool figure. I had heard good things about the movie. I watched it for myself, and it is a pretty fun movie. It's, a, it's pretty campy, but not too bad, honestly. And uh, John Carver here is kind of sick in it, not gonna lie. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the packaging, because this is just a poster, basically, from the movie. It does say, there will be no leftovers. Yeah, that's great. Uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving, as well as Ultimate John Carver action figure now when we look on top it's just gonna say thanksgiving ages 17 and up in the NECA logo there as well as a warning choking hazard but then we look here and i can focus up a little bit if i can we do have credits on the bottom here NECA real toys tristar pictures a barcode in case you need that sometimes i find these at targets but i had to get this on amazon which amazon is really iffy because sometimes they'll ship your action figure as the packaging <laughs> Like, I actually, this is my second one because they had a giant shipping label on the first time here. And I was just like, nope, you're sending me another one because I need to get the packaging for the review. Uh, yeah, so just looking at all of this, and it does say what all comes with this figure in the bottom here. So that's pretty cool. And then you have just images of the figure. And I don't know if I talked about this, but each side here we do have where it says Thanksgiving. And pretty much, again, from the front of the packaging. Now, when we open this up, we get these flaps, of course. It's a little plain going on. There's not much in terms of backgrounds, at least for this image. It's just John Carver there. And it's just red on the inside, but you do see the figure right there. Let's go ahead and get this figure out of the packaging. And here is the figure out of the packaging. It's actually pretty nice. The accessories are pretty cool, too. I haven't messed around with this too much. It does feel a little familiar, and I'll talk about that during the detail section of this figure. Let's take a look at the accessories, then we'll take a close look at this figure. Just like with the other reviews this month, I'll show you some images of what this looks like holding different accessories since I don't have a lot of time at the end of the video to you know, do a proper setup with backdrops and all that. But as you see here, this is John Carver with the knife holding hands, and we'll talk about the hands, exactly how they're done in a little bit. Uh, but the knife holding hands holding different types of knives. You can see the kitchen knife and more of a combat knife as well. So here's his kitchen knife. This is pretty nice. Has a really nice silver finish on the blade there, which I usually do really well. It seems like there's black right there. So that's like a black scratch. That might be in the plastic. Uh, not really a paint chip, I should say. Maybe it is, I'm not sure, because there's definitely black paint here. And then we have silver towards the bottom there. But this is a very tight grip, uh, maybe a little too tight. And those knife holding hands will be careful. We have a com more of a combat knife. And this is pretty nice. It's a slightly looser fit, but it still fits just fine. In fact, I'll show you. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it goes in and out pretty easily. This one here, it takes just a little bit more effort and I you can hear that revving up there a little bit. So yeah, just be careful with that. I can't even take that out right now. This combat knife, uh, combat knife though is really nice with a similar approach would be nice. Silver on the blade, you can see some black going on the handle, which I feel like getting close to that little guard section there should be a little bit, have a little bit more black paint, but it could be wrong. And then we have this little end right there. Here's a quick look at what the meat tenderizer looks like in one of these hands. You know, these uh, knife holding hands have a small grip and you know, there's some hands that have a larger grip, so you're gonna be using the knife holding hands for the meat tenderizer, of course. But this is how this looks. And I really like this like wash, this black wash, almost like this dark weathering all throughout the meat tenderizer. You have you know, this section right here, all these little, I don't know what exactly these would be called in a meat tenderizer, but you can see even some black wash maybe even going on in there. And this is what the back looks like there. Some more black wash up there. And then very nice detailing of wood in the handle where you have a little bit of variation of dark and light brown because of that wash. Looking really nice. We have a two-handed pose here. We have separate hands for holding the larger types of blunt weapons, like the axe here, which this axe is really sick. So let's take a look right here. I'll show you what this looks like in, in full in a second, but beautiful tarnishing and rust looking going on here in the actual head of the axe. And then like some nicks and dents and scratches looking really fantastic. If I back out a little bit, 
you get a better idea of just the length here. Pretty nice. Uh, very nice, like, it's a light brown finish, a little bit of dark going on in here, but really great wood texturing all throughout this piece. And this is a, not super rubbery. It may be a little bit soft, but this is pretty stiff plastic. Just be careful not to bend that, of course. And then we have this sledgehammer, which I'll go ahead and show off an image of what this looks like. Those same hands for the axe uh, you'll be using for the sledgehammer. This thing is really cool. A very similar approach where I think actually it might be a little bit darker in the handle here. Seems like up here it's missing some of that paint, but really great. Like just this weathering. I'm not exactly is it varnishing? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but just great details going on with like these creases and cracks all throughout the uh, the handle there. And then we look towards you know the top here. There's a little bit of excess whatever plastic. I don't know what that is. Uh, but a little bit of tarnishing in there, but a really nice metallic finish to the head of the sledgehammer. It just looks really nice. That's what the top looks like. So you get that wood piece sticking out right there. So yeah, all of that is really nice looking. We do have gun holding hands and that is actually packaged on the figure. So you know, we do have ambidextrous hands. I just showed off what it looks like uh, with the dart gun here in the right hand for now. And it definitely will fit in the left hand. This dart gun is a really nice accessory. I'd love to use this for other NECA figures, even if they're not actually supposed to use it. This is just really sick looking. I really like how they did very subtle details of silver going on here. And it's like a matte black finish as well. Just looking really nice. You know, the barrel, the trigger, little dart uh, magazine, I guess that would be going on in there too. What's the back of it look like? Yeah, I really dig this thing. We also have the blunderbuss, so we do have a separate left hand, actually, uh, that's just on its own, and it is meant for going, you know, holding the bottom of the barrel of the blunderbuss. We only get one left hand for that, though, so you're really only relegated to doing blunderbuss poses with just the right hand, which is fine. This thing still looks fantastic, and again, I'll talk about all those hands in a little bit. I really like what we have with the, uh, I don't know the old workings of what these are going on here but these are a little bit of a softer plastic so they shouldn't bend too much um no that's a harder plastic up here but just really nice like weathering and like stained metal i guess so almost like this bronze barrel here whatever's going on here and then the dark brown just like all throughout here like the stock like going on around the undercarriage, I guess. I don't really know. So, sorry, not super well versed in guns. I apologize. But yeah, this is just a beautiful old timey, old timey, uh, just a very old rifle. And this thing just looks so sick and it's very unique looking. And I really dig that. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual hands, right? I talked about them enough, not these. Here's what's going on with these hands. So you have these particular hands that have a small grip and you might be thinking, well, you get some hands that have a larger grip. So how can you tell? These hands do have sculpted, let's double check. Yeah, so these, the index finger and the thumbs are sculpted together for these. So it's a smaller grip. That's how you know it's for stuff like the meat tenderizer and the knives. Every pair of hands is done in a similar fashion where it's like a glossy black finish going on here. Nice detailing on the back of the hands there. You can see some wrinkling around the actual uh, wrist section. And everything is, so these are up and down, I believe, actually. And some of these are in and out. So the articulation is gonna be a little different with everything, I think. Yeah, so these are in or out. And these are the normal gripping hands. If I can try to find everything, there we go. Yeah, so these definitely have a separation of the thumb and the index finger. So that's meant for holding you know, the larger melee weapons. And the hands here, pretty much every hand, is a softer plastic, so it shouldn't be too hard to fit things in. Sometimes the paint wants to rub off if I can hold anything. Um, the paint wants to rub off a little bit in the hands because things might be too tight, but because these are a softer plastic, that's not really gonna happen. There's still a chance that the paint might rub off, but definitely not as bad as some older neck figures. Last but certainly not least with hands, we do have this hand, as you see here, which kind of looks like a gun holding hand, but you can see the index finger sculpted into the hand. So that is meant for holding underneath the blender bus. So you get an idea of that. Last but certainly not least, I need to talk about the mask. So here's a quick look at the bloody John Carver mask 
fitting on there. Pretty much every mask is done in a very similar fashion because they're the exact same sculpt. And then we just have blood on this here. And just like, you know, the one that uh, you know, the John Carver mask we'll take a look at in the detail section, we have like this variation of brown with like light and darker brown, a little bit of black too, going on in the fake hair and the actual mask. You have the, you know, the facial hair, how all of that is printed. Yeah, it just looks like a you know, cheap plastic mask, which it's supposed to. And then last but not least with the mask, we do have this burned one when he set this on the uh, large scale oven, if you know, you know. Uh, but this thing looks really fantastic with the burn sections here. A lot of weathering going on in the face and then this burn section right there. That's also really, and this is getting a little deformed and drooped right there. So yeah, I'm digging that. A lot of stuff coming with this figure, a lot of great accessories. Pretty long accessory portion, but I honestly believe that this section will be too long. I've said that before and it has been, but there are some things I need to talk about in terms of like reuse from other NECA figures. So first of all, let's talk about the, the hair, you know, the entire head function. This hat is removable. It is basically a removable piece, but because it's so integral to the character, I leave it on. Then this mask can be removed and you have this crazy eyed looking dude. Now what's going on here is that this is actually the same exact head from the My Bloody Valentine figure, as you can see there. I'm having a little bit of trouble fitting both of them in there. Maybe I should zoom out in a second. But you can see that they are the exact same skull, just a little bit more weathering of brown going on in the right there. And of course, as you see, we do have the biggest difference also being a giant gap right there. So you can't really have this figure, uh, you know, <laughs> maskless, because it's just going to be a giant gap there unless you fill that in. Uh, that is completely reused and you know we also have the collars are different but I'm looking at different wrinkles in the chest and how they did like types of stitching in the pockets and wrinkles in the pockets like the upper arms right before you get to the elbow bend a lot of things look reused from you know previous figures that have a you know a jumpsuit like the miner from my bloody valentine and you look at the upper leg sections and they those wrinkles and those creases look the exact same too now, of course you get differences when you get down to the lower legs because of how the boots are done and also how you get to like you, i mean maybe the elbow joint might be the same for both but definitely the forearm sections are different because of how the gloves are done too and then of course because this is actually you no know, this is not sculpted on there i thought that no these are completely different sculpted pieces but yeah, I do think that the entire jumpsuit, minus the collars, which was probably retooled for John Carver, uh, or maybe reused from a different character that uses a jumpsuit, those are reused. And I've mentioned this in some previous NECA action figure reviews lately. I think even the uh, either the Michael Myers or the Nightmare Demons. NECA will reuse parts, but it will make sense when they reuse it, especially a guy who's just supposed to be slightly a normal guy in a jumpsuit. And so that makes sense. But you get an idea of how all of this looks. I showed the 360 earlier. This is what the face looks like here. And yeah, that looks really nice. You know, just a very standard with the eye holes and mouth hole type of mask here. And then we do have, I feel like whatever gold or silver i'm trying to look there that's it. whatever metallic paint is up here this hat likes to fall off a little too easily but uh it's splotching a little bit off into the black unfortunately not too bad though this is a really nice looking hat though that stuff i mentioned earlier about the reuse that's not necessarily a good or bad thing <laughs> just to let you guys know a lot of companies will do that with you know depending on what their character is like marvel Legends does it all the time so you know if it makes sense for NECA, that's fine with me but yeah this thing does look you know pretty nice with all this on and taking a look again you do have some wrinkling all the way around here. And then those crazy eyes on that guy, which is a nice, either blue or green eyes, I can't exactly tell. Pop that all back on. And again, you do have how the collar is done. This one's lifting up a little bit more here. It's a slight softer plastic because this is also going to be a softer plastic overlay for the entire torso, like they usually do with some of these figures. Lots of nice wrinkling, though. I feel like it might be the light but there's not much in terms of any weathering or any kind of shading, which is fine, I guess. And I'm noticing with some of these joints, I do see a little bit of skin tone that's a little apparent. But I mean, the pockets look great. Lots of great detailing of wrinkles and pockets everywhere and how the stitching is kind of coming through in some of these pockets and like the seam lines. 
really digging that, honestly. You have on the back here, like this waistband section. Looking good in the back pockets. Lots of wrinkles. There might be a little bit. No, that was just dust. Looking towards the you know, entire arm section. Again, really nice wrinkles. Uh, I feel like, is Michael even? Yeah, I got Michael here too. Maybe reused from the Halloween Kills Michael. I think it is, which again, that's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It just is what it is. Then we get down to these exact hands for holding the, you know, like guns, basically. So that's pretty cool. And these are, again, a little bit of a softer plastic, so there won't be any trouble with this figure, you know, holding any kind of gun. If you want to give it any kind of gun, I'm, I'm sure it can hold most mecha weapons in that 7-inch scale. Anyways, I didn't mention this, but there's a nice seam line on both, of, underneath the arms there. Then we get down to the side of the legs. A little bit of a seam line that's apparent, I guess, that would be in the, uh, you know, for the actual clothing of how that's detailed. And then kind of on the inside of the legs too, but it's mostly going to be wrinkles pretty much everywhere. There might be a little bit of, like, slight brown because of dirt maybe being collected, um, you know, or maybe on the lower legs, but that also could be the light. I'm not entirely sure. If there is any type of weathering on this, it's very subtle. But it's definitely mostly like a semi-gloss type of black approach to the paint, which is neither, you know, I mean, it's it's fine. It's not bad looking at all. I think that this looks great. Then you get down to these boots, actually, these more modern looking boots that do look really cool. You know, I thought it'd be more of the standard type of boots that we have that are, you know, very traditional looking like with the miner here. But don't mind these at all. I guess I didn't really pay attention to how the boots were done, so... Yeah, that's pretty cool. The inside here with all that detailing, these glossy black boots, looking pretty good. There's some gloss on the outside too. Treading underneath also looks fantastic. We do have peg holes at the bottom of the feet if you have any, you know, you know, stance that will work with this. But, you know, maybe some things could be a little more prominent. But, I mean, yeah, this, this is still really nicely detailed. And then looking on the back of the feet right there. Give me one more quick look at the back of the legs. I mean, things like these joints are going to be a little apparent, but that's just normal for an action figure. Yeah, this thing, again, a little bit of reuse, but the reuse makes sense because it's a dude, a normal dude in this type of ones, uh, you know, one onesie jumpsuit. That's not a proper thing for me to say, but I mean, this thing still looks really fantastic, honestly. One thing I forgot to mention is that this head technically is removable, but we don't get any kind of extra head. Maybe you can fit something on there. Maybe you can get a custom head of whoever it revealed to be the killer. I'm not going to say who. It's a little bit of a newer movie. But in terms of the articulation, you can make everything move together. Again, this wants to pop off a little too much. I forgot to mention the ears are nicely protruding right there too, just like with the minor figure. But that does pop up there and you do get a little bit of some revealed skin. That's a pretty nice touch. Moving down is really not apparent. But side to side is also, because this whole thing, this whole neck piece is covering that unfortunately and side to side is not super easy but swiveling is not too bad here arms going out though well, yeah that's not great i feel like michael might have been a little bit better actually yeah that really doesn't want to go out at all but arms do go all the way around here we do have double jointed elbows and then we have different swivels here and here at parts of the elbow joint now i did talk about some of the different types of you know joints going on here some of these hands are in and outs some of these are up and downs we are up and downs with the gun holding hands there. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Some of these are in and out, like I just said, uh, but also everything is gonna have a swivel at the wrist here as well. Now, when it comes to, it's a little bit hard to do these with these onesie pieces and these, all these, bla uh, these plastic pieces. You can't really move the torso at all. Swiveling is not really existent either. You get a little bit of side to side, but that's really it, not really great range of motion in the stomach doesn't entirely need to be i guess maybe a little bit more he's pretty active in the movie going back there because we have soft plastic this will you know deform a little bit but as far back as it wants to go goes forward like that and again soft plastic that will deform a little bit but you get pretty much perfect splits here too upper thigh swivel that's a little squeaky but can move pretty well then we get a single joint knee that's not very good at all swiveling here you do have a swivel at the actual ankle. Up and down is actually really good, despite this kind of covering things. And then we do get an ankle rocker there. So some sections could be a little bit better, but some sections 
of articulation are surprisingly good. So it gets a little tricky doing the measurements because you would have to figure out either the top of the actual head without the hat or where the hat lays. So you'll get around 19 centimeters to the top of the head, 21 centimeters to the top of the hat. That will make that about seven and three fourths inches or eight and a quarter inches, depending on which one you want to do with that. On the left there, we do have the Michael Myers I previously reviewed, which looks to be the, about the same height, but the hat makes John Carver look a little taller. A seven inch McFarlane Toys Batman there is actually gonna be a little bit shorter. And then standard size Marvel Legends and Black Series figures are definitely gonna be shorter. Overall, I've liked just about every figure I've reviewed this month for my little Halloween specials every week, but this might be my particular favorite so far. There's nothing super duper remarkable about the overall design here, which, you know, that's kind of accurate to the movie, but how they captured it is still really nice. The way that everything looks with the suit, yes, there's retooling, but it makes sense. The unique stuff that needs to be here are really nice, and it's still overall a very nicely painted and detailed figure, just like NECA usually makes their figures out to be. It's cool that we have different functions of removing the hat and the mask, even if that face is reused, Technically, I mean, I really don't care. You're gonna be covering up pretty much the whole time, so it doesn't matter. The other accessories though, all the different weapons, you know, the knives, the blunderbuss, the dart gun is my personal favorite. I don't know, it just looks really sick. And then, you know, like the ax and the sledgehammer, those are fantastic. The different hands needed are great. The different masks, all the meat cleavers also pretty sick. Everything is really nice here. And this honestly is a pretty decent bang for your buck. I think it's usually $35 to $37. That seems a little high. I think I got mine on Amazon for $32, but usually Amazon likes to destroy extra figure boxes. So keep that in mind if you get it from there. I'll leave links in the description down below if you're trying to find this. Maybe you can find it at Target. Sometimes I find it there, sometimes I don't. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you think about the figure, what you think about the review. Leave a like, share amongst your friends. Follow me on Instagram for more content over there, and I'll see you guys later.